So today, I'm very lucky to be joined by Will Brick, the co-founder and CEO of Exa.ai. Exa just announced an incredible round, Series B, of 85 million at 700 million valuation. That's crazy. Congrats. Thank you. So to get started, can you tell us what problem you're solving? I mean, the problem is that there's this new kid on the block, it's called AI, and it needs to search the web. And so traditional search engines like Google and Bing, they weren't built for this world, they were built for humans. And so X is actually a search engine built for AIs. What's different from a Google or normal search engine when you are targeting AI instead of humans? Yeah, if you think about a human versus AI, they are not the same. So like a human is like this lazy creature that types in a few keywords, gets a list of links, like clicks on the links, like likes UI, all these things. And AI is like a super crazy, like, can, at, like you know, can type out a whole paragraph explaining what it needs, like can scan like a thousand results and only wants the highest quality knowledge. And so if you're optimizing a search engine for this creature as opposed to this one, you're going to end up making all sorts of design choices. So for example, you need to be able to support more complex queries that an AI is not lazy and it, it can make those queries. And you need to be able to support like a ton of results returned to the search engine. You also need to uh, support like all sorts of customizations that customers that own the AI want to make. So it's just a whole different world, really. So at the end of the day, like this AI, they work for a human. Yeah. So how does human interact with the end result of that actions? Yeah, because I, I mean, ultimately, everything is for the service yeah. of humanity. We're not just trying to make AIs happy. So I mean, basically, we're, we serve companies. That's another, that's another difference. Like, we're not a consumer search engine like Google or Bing. Yeah. We serve you know, companies, enterprises, startups. Uh, and they you know, have some sort of product or application that it has AI inside it. And whenever that uh, application or product needs to search the web, it'll use Exa. So like Exa is powering under, under the hood a lot of these systems, these AI products that a lot of us use every day. So if I understand correctly, I mean, when I look at the market, I've not seen anyone else trying to do what you do today. Yeah. And people are relying on a Google or maybe Perplexity, but there is no other product. Like, how do you explain that? OK, so there are a couple of reasons why you don't see other companies doing exactly what we're doing. And it's because, one, it's extremely hard. So like building a search engine from scratch, like people have been scared about doing that since Google existed. Uh, and like it takes years of research development, so you kind of need a, a team that's crazy enough to do it. But then also a very unique thing is our business model, which is like we're not trying to be a platform that humans go to. We're trying to be search infrastructure that works under the hood and all these applications. And that's just like a whole different like idea that no one really thought about, and we just like we're fine doing that. Like we are very happy serving the world and being search infrastructure. Like no one needs to know there's Exxon underneath the hood, and that just allows us to build all these things that like companies like Google and Bing just won't. I think you have two products, right? An mm -hmm. API and yeah. website. Yeah. What's the difference? This is very akin to uh, OpenAI, where they have, you know, their fast. Well, they used to have their GPT-4.0, <laughs> and then they would have their O3. Uh, they have their fast GPT-4.0 and their, their like, slow-thinking O3. And so we we also um, we have you know our fast search uh, that is synchronous and returns very fast. Uh, and then we have our like slow one called websites, and it could take a minute or even ten minutes or in some cases a day uh, to get you the highest quality results. And I think the point here is that. Uh, when AI systems are searching the web, they need a whole diverse spectrum of, of latency profiles. And so X is building that. So you started Exa uh, before ChatGPT was even yeah. released, right? Yeah. Uh, at that time, if I remember correctly, you were even trying to compete with Google yeah. to do a web search. Yeah. And like, first, maybe why did you try to do that? And then second, like, what did change when ChatGPT was released? Yeah, yeah, sure. So we started Exa four years ago. This is way before ChatGPT came out. So this whole idea of search for AIs, it wasn't really... Uh, it wasn't yeah, on our radar. No yeah, there was no AI to build to search, search for. Yeah. But what we wanted to do was build a, a better search engine than Google because at the time, GB3 had recently come out. This is summer 2021, and it was magical. You know, it could like understand a whole paragraph of text at like a deep level. And at the same time, there was Google, which felt like it hadn't changed in a decade. So the idea for Exa was like, what if we could build a search engine that could understand you on a deep level uh, and give you exactly what you wanted? And we kind of built it for ourselves, like we want like for our, our humans. We built yeah. it for humans, uh, but not we were like you know a nerdy type of human. And the thing about nerds is like they want the highest quality knowledge. And so we were trying to build a search engine that like didn't give you SEO, it didn't give you ads, it just gave you super high quality knowledge, exactly what you asked for. And it turned out uh, when ChatGPT came out and we started getting all these requests for like API access for these AI systems to use search. The thing we had built was perfect for these AIs because you know nerds and AIs are actually very similar. They both want the highest quality knowledge. So we were the whole time we were actually building the ideal search engine for AI systems. Uh, we just didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, how fast after uh, ChatGPT was released yeah. did you change the direction? Pretty fast. Like, so we we had this search engine that we had we launched on Twitter. It got a lot of excitement. Like Andre Carbathy retweeted it. It was pretty cool. Then ChatGPT came out two weeks later. Uh, and that stole a lot of the thunder in, in, in the Twitter world. And then we pretty quickly started getting requests for API access because people started, I mean, the, like, the actual access, uh, access to like 
uh, ChatGPT level tech like came a little bit later, like a few months later. But then we started getting uh, API requests, and at first we kind of just like dismissed them. We were like, no, 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 like why would you even need an API access to a search engine? Like, no, we're building this like new type of technology. We didn't really think about it. And then you know I got requests from some. One of the first ones was some uh, VC uh, in Germany. And that was interesting. And then uh, my, my roommate was like building like all sorts of projects. And then at some point, like we were like, oh, wait a second, Th there's something here. And, and there was actually this, this big moment when me and Jeff were chilling in his room. And like, we were like, wait a second, what if we're a search engine for AIs? And it was like, and the second we said the, 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 the expression, it all like clicked into place. It was like, oh my God, that is the world that is coming. And it became very obvious. And this was like many years ago. So it, still, there weren't many AIs to serve, but it was very obvious where the world was going. And so did you change like direction like the next day? Yeah, it was right, right, pretty much right away, we started like building an API and like we were like, okay, let's give it to these customers. So we built an API. It was just a wrapper over our current search engine and then like with some uh, pricing. Was that contrarian at that time? Yeah, I mean, no one, like we were the first ones to say search engine for AI and it sounded crazy at the time. Uh, it doesn't sound that crazy anymore. Was there any other uh, contrarian bets that you made in the early days? Yeah, I mean, there were a lot. Uh, it's a, very contrarian company, I would say, which I love. Like I, I almost always do the thing that other people aren't doing. Like I, I, once people start to do a lot of things, I want to do something different. A big one was just when we set out. So again, like four years ago, we set out to build a new type of search engine. We were like, okay, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to, you know, the bitter lesson uh, apply to search. We're just going like, to figure out a way to like pour a ton of compute into a search engine. How do we do that? Well, we need to get a big GPU cluster. Uh, so we were like. Okay, let's raise a seed after YC and spend half of it on a GPU cluster. Which is like remember, insane. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, like we were, we had that conversation. It was like an insane thing to do, but but it, from first principles it made sense because we were like we need to develop new research in order to make a new type of search engine. So it makes sense to spend most of our capital on that. And yeah, I mean, in some ways we didn't follow a lot of YC advice, but like we didn't talk to users. You know, we uh, we just like you know focused for like a year and a half uh, building uh, a new type of search engine, which which actually like turned out pretty well. Yeah. YC's next batch is now taking applications. Got a startup in you? Apply at ycombinator.com slash apply. It's never too early, and filling out the app will level up your idea. OK, back to the video. Let's speak maybe a bit about the product and some of your choices. Yeah. I mean, you decided to call the web yourself, right? Yeah. Why not rely on an existing search engine? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely partly an the identity thing here, where it's like, no, we're building a search engine from scratch. But also, it, it turned it, it was the correct uh, business decision because by owning the full stack, we have full control over the technology and can like customize it for customers in all sorts of ways. And customers really care about you having your own search engine for various reasons. One is customization, like, hey, I only want to search over a thousand domains. Like, there are a lot of enterprise customers who want that. And like, if you're wrapping Google, you can't filter to a thousand domains, it doesn't let you. Or, um, you know, if you want to get a thousand results instead of a hundred, like, you, you only can do that if you own your own search technology. Uh, then there are other things like zero data retention. Like if you want true zero data retention for like a financial customer, which basically all of them need, you need to have your own uh, independent search engine. So, and that's just a three. Like there are like tons of reasons, and it, it turned out to be totally the right call uh, to build our own search engine, and just control our own destiny. Speaking of like crazy bad here, you also decided like very early on to build your own model. Yeah. Like, like there were like already some open source models. Why not just pick an open source model and fine tune it? At the time, the open source models were pretty bad. They're still bad. I think. Um, the open source community, like uh, models for uh, for like like language, like like language modeling, like generating text, are pretty good. But in terms of like open source search engine models, they're 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 very bad because like you take the best off the shelf embedding model and you uh, you try to make a search engine out of that, it'll be really bad because these models are meant to search over like hundreds of thousands of documents, like millions of documents, not like hundred billion web documents that are very chaotic and. and uh, there, there are all sorts of reasons why like off-the-shelf models don't really work well for search. And so I guess you are like constantly training this model. Like, what does your infra looks like? We're constantly trying to think of ways we could pour more compute into the model to make it better. Uh, and so that's why we have like, like you know, at first we have do, to, do you still have yeah. your own hardware? Uh, we do have our own hardware. So we, we we've leveled up to like uh, from our original cluster. Now we have like a five million dollar GPU cluster. So 144 H200s. We call it the Exa cluster because. Exa means 18, uh, 10 to the 18th, and uh, and it's 18 nodes. But now we're going to get you know even way more compute with this Series B. We're basically trying to uh, teach this model about the entire world's knowledge. How is that different from like an LLM, a traditional LLM? Like oh uh, well, an LLM uh, is trained on the world's data, but then it it compresses it into like a, a set of weights. And like the problem is like it can't memorize the whole web. Okay. So like even if you just think about it from an information theory argument, it's like the web is like you know, a huge amount of petabytes, and then like the GB4 size model is like a few terabytes. So, like you literally can't fit the whole web in, into the weights of this model. So, and, and that's why like an LLM will know when Albert Einstein was born, but
but it doesn't know when I was born uh, because it just hasn't memorized everything. And like the knowledge on the edge is is the most no, no, uh, valuable knowledge. Uh, so so both like LLMs can't memorize the whole web, but also the web is constantly changing. So your LLMs are always going to have to rely on search. So how do you make sure the results are actually good? Like how do we evaluate yeah. uh, the results? Like with just normal AI research, like uh, evals are extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to get like one eval that captures everything you want. Is there a benchmark out there that works for what you're doing? No, so uh, there's really none. So like it, that, that even makes it harder. So not like not only is there not, you can't make one eval, but you, and you, you always have to have like a diversity of evals. But then also like there, there's no standardized evals around search engines. And so we're basically making those all in-house. And we want to be thought leaders here. Like we want to publish, mm -hmm. we, like, we want to publish papers about like, our evals, how we run them, so that other people can contribute and like really start that movement to have evals around search engine because it's so important, uh, but it just doesn't exist. So it's been hard to evaluate the model, and uh, there's a lot of secret sauce that goes into the evals themselves. But you're still going to uh, publish some benchmark others can compare yeah, yeah. themselves to? Yeah, yeah. That's okay, looking forward to that. Okay, awesome. Looks like your customers, your users are AI agents now, right? Yeah. Mostly, like at least it's changing. How do you see that evolving? Do you think that uh, a few years from now it's going to be mostly agents? Yeah, I mean, uh, companies are at different stages of, of uh, integrating LLMs. So like, some people just use you know, one LLM call, and then some people are doing building full, full out agents. And I think like, over time, everyone will move towards agents because they're just like smarter, better. Uh, they have different properties, right? Like an agent can um, take a longer time. Agents make more sense in uh, products or workloads that are asynchronous. So I think like, over time, yes, everyone will move towards agentic systems. But I mean, an agent is really just like heavy, heavy calls of LLMs. So it's not that different. Does that? Uh change the product in any way? Like, how you're going to build the product? Yeah, I mean, you could imagine what the world looks like with agents. Like, I, one thing we always do at X is, like, imagine what the world looks like and then build for that world. Uh, because if you're building for the current world, like, the, like AI changes so fast that, like, you're going to be outdated within a year. So, like, what will the world look like? Well, yes, there will be agents doing all sorts of, taking all sorts of actions. And, for example, one thing they might do is do, like, 100 searches uh, within one request. So you talk to your agent and then it does 100 uh, searches in the background. Well, then what do you need? Well, you need those searches to be really fast because like, if it goes from like a second to 100 milliseconds, suddenly you've just 10x reduced the, the latency yeah, of that so agent. The latency so is kind of like important. going to be a high priority. Yeah. Let's now talk maybe about the news you're announcing. Yeah. So that crazy Series B, raising yeah. 85 million at 700 million valuation. Yeah. Why now? Why is that much? Yeah, I mean, some would argue that that's not enough to build a, a search engine from scratch. So you're doomed? <laughs> right. Uh, no, no, no. There, there's a lot you could do with $85 million. Uh, and we've been very like, frugal and clever about how we spend the money. Uh, for example, you don't have to index the entire web. But yeah, I mean, we're going to basically scale up everything. So scale up uh, our GPU cluster uh, so we can do like, way more research way faster. Uh, we're going to scale up like, our crawling and processing of the web, uh, which I mean, the web is pretty big. So like, uh, uh, it's not too big, actually. It's actually it's, it's manageable. We're getting to the point where it's like manageable. Um, and then, of course, hire the best people in the world. Uh, looking ahead, uh, what does search looks like like five years from now? Like both for agents and for humans. Search five years from now is kind of I think of it as like the search that we should have had when I was born. Okay. Like you know, because like we're a civilization that made it to the moon. Like we should have full access to the information in our world. Like there's so much information, there's so much knowledge out there, and it's actually so hard to f to find it. And you know, like you know, whenever you like stumble upon knowledge, you're like, oh, I wish I knew that before. Like that experience should go away. And so, like one way you can think about the world in five years is like any sort of request for information that you need should just immediately happen, and you have no no blocker. So, for example, like recruiting is an information blocker right now. Like you are a company that needs people to hire. You should know all the people you need to hire. Convincing them is another thing, but at least you should know about them. Uh, like why why would you ever not like you should know who are all the engineers that perfectly match your company. And so that's like a search problem that we want to solve. Or for example, if you're trying to do sales. Uh, like you want to sell, you know, you're, you're trying to sell to a certain type of company. You should know about all the companies in the world. And if any new one comes out, you should immediately know about them. Like that, there's like this coordination problem in the world that we just accept as normal. It's not going to be normal in five years. We're going to look back and be like, how on earth did they function without perfect information? Sounds like it's uh, use cases you already are serving today, right? Yeah, we're already serving those use cases today. And like, they're very good, and, you know, far better than a lot of stuff that exists out there. But um, it could be perfect. I want it to be perfect. Hey, speaking of hiring, I, I yeah. guess that you'll hire even more now? Oh yeah, for sure. We're definitely. What, what are you looking for? Yeah, we're looking across the board. Like, uh, really, the fundamental thing is like people crazy enough to build the next generation of search. We typically hire not for experience, but for like extreme like intelligence and hunger. Extremely good engineers who are excited to like scale up uh, a search engine to like a trillion pages. Researchers or people who want to do AI research. You don't even need that much experience, but if you like, you want to do experiments, you want to create training data, you want to create evals. 
like X is a great place to like learn those things rapidly and then just like become an expert. I mean, also like just go to market people who want to sell. Like there's like a huge market for this. <laughs> like uh, there's like a huge opportunity. And so like also like change a lot of lives. Like like uh, there are a lot of people, there are millions of people using us now. You had that uh, fun hack, like uh, these mass puzzle posters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you tell us what you did there? We try to do creative things. So like uh, in this case, it was... Uh, we were like, okay, how can we like hire people better? I had I, maybe we could do something fun like in the physical world because no one does that. And we were like, oh wait, what if we just put like posters around the city? Okay, what will be on the posters? Why don't we make it like a puzzle? Because if an engineer sees a puzzle, they're gonna like a moth to a flame. They're gonna want to solve it, and then the puzzle will link to Exa, and that'll be all this cute thing that'll make them like Exa. Did you like, hire anyone? Yeah, yeah, we hired one person from it. So that was like in terms of expected value, it was pretty high. Like it, it took us like an hour to think of the idea. You know, uh, an hour and a half to think how, of the how puzzle. How many people applied? Oh, like a hundred probably. Yeah. Okay, hundred yeah, yeah. and got one good hire yeah, out of yeah. that. Well, that's that's worth it. Let me conclude maybe with a couple of questions about like more your entrepreneur like yeah. journey. Yeah. What would be one thing uh, you'd love to have known when you started? If I had known how constant the challenges are. Okay, so every day I come to the office and there are four really hard problems, like four fires and four amazing things happening, and that just never changes. And so like in the beginning, maybe I was like a little like nervous about that stuff and like stressed. But now I get excited about it because it's just part of the job. So I think just like the acceptance of there will be always problems. And like a startup is almost like a sequence of problems that you solve until you look back and you're like, holy cow, we built this amazing thing. And just like accepting that philosophy early on, I think would have helped. So, so you just said like it's super hard every single day. Yeah. You wake up and you have like only so many new challenges every day. Why do you do this, man? Yeah, right. It's kind of crazy, right? Why devote a lifetime to stress? Well, I think it comes back to what I said about a noble cause. So, you know, we started this company really to organize the world's knowledge for real, like complete mm -hmm. the mission that Google kind of never completed. And I know that's super important for the world. And, and I've been thinking about that for a long time, even way, way before EXA. Like, that's why we started. And that's what keeps me going on the most fundamental level. I would say there's this new uh, interesting motivation now, which is just the game. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just so fun. And like, you feel yourself leveling up. It feels almost like a video game where you're like leveling up and then like the second you level up to like 10 people and then 20 people, 30 people, and then suddenly you have uh, new problems uh, that are completely different. It's just thrilling to level up, level up your team, like build something together. And so that was something unexpected that it keeps surprising me in how like varied the problems are and crazy and they get harder, but you get smarter. And that's just, it, 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 so it's- you want to see what's next? Yeah, what's I, next I, I want to see what's, what's around, what, I want to see what's on level 42 and five, you know 57. And then I don't know what the final boss is, but probably crazy. So was there any uh, big challenge you faced along the way? I mean, yeah, there have been tons. I think one interesting one is, uh, you know, right around the time ChatGPT came out when we were building our search engine, there were rumors that Bing was like combining LLMs with search. And we were like, oh no, is that going to like solve search? And, you know, we were worried about Bing chat. And then when it came out, like, n n it didn't matter at all. And I think the, the learning there was, you know, don't worry too much about competitors uh, because like, you know, they're building whatever they're building and often it fails and they have all their problems. And like, if you focus on what you're doing and just like, if it's a big enough market, you're going to dominate in whatever you're doing. So like, you know, over the years, like there have been so many like, oh no, is like Google going to do this? Is, is Bing going to do this? Is OpenAI going to do this? And it's like, it doesn't matter. So you don't really care about competitors anymore? I mean, I think about them and, and it's important for like marketing and strategy, but what matters more is uh, team execution and like speed and velocity. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks so much, Will, for joining us today. Thank it was you. great to learn about your journey with Exile, yep. and uh, can't wait to see uh, what's next for you.